Fake Moon Landing, Zon 5 On September 18th, 1968, United States intelligence picked up a signal from Zon 5, a Soviet lunar mission. The series of messages were strange, as the voices of cosmonauts Valery Bukovsky, Vitaly Sevastinov, and Pavel Popovich could be heard speaking as though they were just about to land on the moon. The Americans felt they had underestimated the Soviets when they heard a voice say, quote, The flight is proceeding according to normal. We are approaching the surface. The CIA, NASA, and President Richard Nixon were horrified and did not know whether the USSR had just beaten them in the race to the moon or if it was all a very cunning hoax. In the end, it turned out to be a little bit of both. In 1968, almost a decade had passed since the Soviets had taken the world by storm with the Sputnik launch. But their days of glory were behind, as NASA had grown strong and was already developing its Saturn V rocket. Still, the USSR was not willing to give up so easily and developed two programs to land a man on the moon. The first was the N-1, whose objective was to develop a rocket to land a single cosmonaut on the moon while the other was Zond, or Probe, which included two robotic spacecraft and planned to put two cosmonauts on circumlunar missions without a moon landing. After several failed launch attempts, the Soviets finally achieved partial success with Zond 4 in the early spring of 1968, and Zond 5 quickly followed. For this launch, the Soviets decided to send two tortoises aboard the spacecraft to see how they would react to space prior to sending a human. On September 15, 1968, Zon-5 successfully launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, and six days later, it made its way to Earth after accomplishing its mission. While this occurred, the Soviets knew the Americans were tapping their communications, and cosmonaut Pavel Popovich decided to play with them a little. According to Popovich, quote, When we realized we would never make it to the moon, we decided to engage in a bit of hooliganism. We asked our engineers to link the on-the-probe receiver to the transmitter with a jumper wire. Moon flight missions were then controlled from a command center in Yevpatoria in Crimea. When the probe was on its path around the moon, I was at the center. So I took the mic and said, The flight is proceeding according to normal. We're approaching the surface. The Americans bit the bait. Moments after that, President Nixon asked United States Space Advisor Frank Borman, quote, Why the hell is Popovich reporting from the moon? A month later, Borman visited the USSR, and the moment he spotted Popovich at the airport, he yelled, quote, Hey, you, space hooligan. Apes in Space As incredible as it sounds, it's said that the Planet of the Apes movies might have inspired astronaut Scott Kelly's master prank aboard the International Space Station. The record holder for the longest continuous time spent in space decided to go big to celebrate his first anniversary in space and do it with a little humor by terrorizing some of his fellow crewmen with an ape suit. Kelly arrived at the International Space Station in March of 2014 with Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko as part of an experiment that aimed to study how the human body changes during an ultra-long spaceflight. Although similar studies of this nature had been conducted before, this was the first time a study was focused on analyzing the effects on a genetic level. Before Kelly's trip, scientists had already been studying him and his identical twin brother, Mark, also a NASA astronaut. But taking a gorilla suit to the International Space Station was not easy, and the key was Kelly's brother, who sent him the suit in a resupply flight to the station. Since then, Mark has kept silent as to how he managed to do it. Once the gag gift arrived at the station, Scott made sure to hide it from curious eyes. He then waited for the right time, jumped into the suit, and then climbed into a soft-sided container to pull off his prank. British astronaut Tim Peake was the lucky man to first fall prey to Kelly's hijinks. A video published by NASA and Scott Kelly's personal Twitter account showed the unexpected scene. The footage shows Peake moving and analyzing a white storage container in the station's Destiny Laboratory. Then, after writing down some notes, Peek analyzes the box, takes a look or two, and then disappears into one of the station's runways. Seconds later, Kelly can be seen climbing out of the container, wearing his full-body gorilla costume, 
and in the next shot, the gorilla is seen floating into the module next door. A moment later, Peek appears to be floating for his life in zero-g as a giant ape chases him throughout the station. When Kelly published the video, he wrote, quote, Needed a little humor to lighten up a year in space. Go big or go home. I think I'll do both. However, not everyone took it that way. NASA Watch's Keith Cowing questioned the prank and said to the media, quote, I'm all for making the ISS relevant to the public in new ways and for making childish jokes at NASA's expense whenever possible. But given the immense cost of the ISS, its untapped potential for research, and complaints from potential users that there's not enough upmass or crew time, I have to wonder why NASA goes out of its way to highlight such stuff. Still, Kelly's ape prank served as a stress reliever for the astronaut and passed down in history as one of the most memorable space pranks ever pulled off. Spacewalk Without Spacesuits To celebrate April Fool's Day on April 1st, 2010, a three-man crew at the International Space Station decided to play a cosmic prank on Mission Control. The crew living aboard the station sent a picture of themselves waving their hands in a Martian salute while floating in space without spacesuits. The three men appeared to be wearing glasses, khaki pants, and a blue polo shirt outside one of the protective windows of the space station. The astronauts told Control not to worry about their safety, for they were undoubtedly wearing eye protection, sunscreen, and were close to each other so as not to drift away. After sending the picture, astronaut Shannon Lucid radioed the station, quote, You have a real problem, but you know it's outside our capability to help you. According to a note from Space.com, another astronaut, Timothy T.J. Creamer, said, quote, We wanted to welcome you guys to April, and hopefully we brought you guys some smiles and not a lot of nervousness. A Strange Woman's Voice On September 10th, 1973, four years after Neil Armstrong had landed on the moon, and two years before the war in Vietnam was over for the United States, Astronaut Owen K. Garriott was close to completing 60 full days orbiting the Earth aboard Skylab, the first space station developed by the U.S., when something particularly strange happened. While Garriott was monitoring the Earth from Skylab, a team of specialists back on Earth was analyzing, measuring, and giving support to the Skylab crew. Then specialist Robert Bob Crippen, also an astronaut, picked up a one-of-a-kind message, quote, Hello, Houston. This is Skylab. Are you reading me down there? The voice was very gentle and soft, and sounded like a woman. Bob and the rest of the specialists went crazy for a couple of seconds, as there were no women aboard Skylab. Several people then gathered around Crippen, and after a brief pause, he asked her to identify herself. She then replied, claiming to be Garriott's wife. A pause followed, and Crippen asked her what she was doing over there, to which she replied, quote, Well, we just came up to bring the boys a fresh meal or a hot cooked meal, they haven't had one for quite a while. We thought they might enjoy that. A bigger crowd gathered around Crippen, and the voice continued, quote, Well, I see the boys are floating in my direction. I gotta get off the line. I'm not supposed to be talking to you. See you later, Bob. After the initial shock, Houston realized it had all been a very cunning joke. To pull it off, Garriott had recorded his wife and marked pauses for every statement to give Crippen, who was in on the joke, enough time to say something. It was not until a decade later that Garriott told the media how he was able to pull off the hoax, just around the time that NASA put its first female astronaut into space. Her name was Sally Ride. Moon Cockroach During the Apollo 12 mission preparations, a very special guest refused to leave the command module that the crew would use while in space. It was a very insistent cockroach. Launch director Bob Siek resorted to an array of tricks to get rid of the intruder, but the cockroach refused to leave the spacecraft. Siek was mad, but eventually forgot about the insect and got on with the mission. Then, after the successful mission on November 14, 1969, the crew had a televised press conference. During the interview, Commander Charles Pete Conrad Jr. showed a strip of white cardboard with a small black object on its surface. It was the infamous cockroach. One of NASA's engineers then asked him, quote, You found him, huh? To which Conrad replied, quote, We sure did. He was in the food locker. He's very fat. 
Conrad later admitted that what he showed was a joke, and the cockroach was a plastic toy he had taken with him for the mission. No one ever knew what happened to the real cockroach in space. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below of any other curious space pranks that you might have heard of.